Hello everyone, welcome to video two of our home training drilling videos. So, the drill video number one had a lot of views, thank you everyone that watched it, we really appreciate it. This is video number two, and hopefully you won't just watch them once and do them, but you'll repeat them, try and get a little bit of training every day. If you can get a bit better every day, it makes a huge difference. And to all my students, my normal students that watched it, and are training at home, thank you so much, because it's gonna be, just, I can't imagine kept on coming back and forgetting everything. It's gonna, <laughs> It's going to be so upsetting. Um, so we're going to start off with a really common submission uh, called a triangle choke. Actually, my favourite submission. Did you know? Chris used to be called Chris Triangle Fencer for like the first four years of him training. When I started, this is all I could get. So we're going to go through the technique. So just sit and watch for a minute, and then we will do some drilling. I'll show you how you can practice it on your own, or if you've got someone you can grab a child or something, then you can practice it at home. So we're going to look at triangle choke from close guard. The close guard is this position. Judy's on her knees, my feet around, my feet across here. And what I'm going to do for this way of teaching, there's lots of different ways to set up triangles, but I'm going to do the old school way that I used to do when I was a white belt. I'm going to just hold both my wrists like this, and I'm going to push and pull, right? And what I want to do at the same time, usually she's got a bit of posture here, so as I do my push and pull, I pull her in with my legs like this, right? So there's a little bit of a surprise, like that. Now, the hand, I push between my legs here. I'm going to bring my legs over the top of it and then let go. My old coach used to call this the fly trap, right? My feet come over the top and hook. Now, from there, I want to get an angle. So I'm going to grab my shin because I don't want it to posture out of it. I'm going to put my foot on a hip and stay really tight. I'm going to angle off, clamp this leg down tight, and then my foot over this one and then squeeze. I'm just going to tap her out. Hit. So we'll do it one more time and I'll show you how to practice it at home. So I'm here, and the same thing, if, you're, if, you, if this is new to you, I'm, I'm going quite fast because most people know triangles, but if this is new to you, just if you watch the video, you can press the slow motion button in the corner of YouTube, you better get a lot more out of it. So push and pull, pull my legs, fly trap, hold my shin, foot on my hip with my knee tight, angle off here, and then squeeze in tight to get the finish. You didn't do the crocodile bite. We didn't do the crocodile bite. Too much detail. So, <laughs> We want to know how we can practice that on our own at home, right? So often with triangles, somebody will have like a really good posture here, right? So we posture tall, and maybe they're like reaching behind you with this hand, trying to feel your legs, right? So if I can lift my legs up, boom, sometimes I can throw my legs up and trap a triangle. So that's what we're going to practice at home now, right? So I'm going to face this way. You can face that way. We do opposite directions, right? So I'm going to... I'm going to start set up, it's a bit easier. I'm going to roll back and lift my hips up in the air, right? So most people can kind of hold this position. My foot's going to go under my knee, and then this foot's going to come down, and this is my triangle position in the air. And I'm not going to keep it, I'm going to let go, and come back down. There. And then the other side is going to come up, so legs up, under, under, and back. Good, now we're going to do it 20 times, you ready? No. Everyone at home, we need to do it to my count. You ready? One, and two, three, four, you keep it up. No. Five. I don't like being quarantined with you. Six. It's forcing me to be more exercised than I would normally do. Seven. <laughs> Eight. Good. Yeah. Try and do it like me, not Julia. Huh? How rude. Nine. But I totally agree. <laughs> Let's get some height on it now. Push them through the high. Eleven, look at that. I'm on the roof. Twelve. Ugh, you're practically doing your best. Thirteen. I don't know what I'm doing. Fourteen. I just wanted to get fat and eat snacks. Fifteen. <laughs> Sixteen. <laughs> Seventeen. Eighteen. Nineteen. 20! Oh, I guess. Dude. And yeah. if you've got a drink, go and have a little drink now. Oh. We're moving to our next one. Judy's going to check the camera. So, and grab a drink. And grab a drink for us. So that was our triangle chokes. Remember, the triangle is one of the most fundamental chokes of Jiu Jitsu. We want to be able to lift our hips high and get a nice tight triangle. And when we're doing it, we're always, although we're, at the moment we're just practicing doing this, we're always looking to get an angle here. So even if you're drilling on your own, Want to make it a bit harder? You can come back and then angle off, and then come back. So come back, angle off, and then come back. Get a little bit more on it. 
Right, so we're gonna move on to our uh, next one. So you can put a jacket on for me, Julia. So we're gonna look at a gi choke. You don't need a jacket, I'm just a certain gi choke. Ow! Don't head by the light, I think it's out of shot, but Julia head by the light. So, <laughs> we're gonna look at a uh, real simple, a cross choke from closed guard. This is the diagonal again. So, I'm here. I open the lapel. Slide this hand up, fingers in, thumb out, and I'm trying to get it as high up as I can, right? Pull her in. Now, I'm going to swap sides so you can see. This is the bit people sometimes mess up. I want to use my forearm to lift her face up. See how happy she is? That means I'm doing her right. And then that will give me space to get this hand through here and get my hands together. Now, once I've got my hands in tight, I don't want to do this, see people do this. I want to use my hip. So as my Elbows come past my side, it naturally brings my arms apart, right? So I use my body as a wedge. And I want to bring the closer I am to Julia, the tighter the choke's going to be. So I want to go here, check the view. And I want to come here and then touch ears, <coughs> and I can do the choke. Always touch ears and then whisper something creepy. That adds the effect. So, <laughs> what we're going to do, I'm going to face that way, I'm going to face this way, is we're going to do gi chokes like that, but we're going to do it like sit ups. So we're going to be here, right? And all I'm going to do is sit up, grip, grip, and then come back. Sit up, grip, grip, and come back. Now every time I want you to swap which hand you lead with. So you see I'm going that way, then that way, yeah. and keep on for me. Do you want to get diagonal? Will you sit diagonal? I sit that way, either way, right? Do you sit like that? So, <laughs> we're going to do, so keep that closed guard, we're going to do 20 all together. You ready? One, two, Three. Now, if you're a bit more advanced, four, you want to switch grips to other chokes, five, baseball back choke, six, <laughs> opposite grip, seven, good, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, should be starting to burn a little bit, thirteen, fourteen, we're slowly spinning, <laughs> sixteen, ah. seventeen, ah. eighteen, 19, oh, I just 20, ah. very good. Ow. Same thing, if you found that too easy at home, you could do more sets, more reps. Like, we might do another set of 20. Should we do another set of 20? No. With the people at home watching on the video? No. Come on, let's go. Alright, off you go, Chris. Alright, you count, I'll do it. I'll roll out of the shot. I'm going to do 20 more, and I'm going to change grips as I go, so you can see all the different types of grips. Okay, you One. count. Standard grip. Two. Standing grip the other way. Three. Baseball back choke that way. Four. Baseball back choke that way. Five. Fingers in, thumb in. Six. Fingers in, thumb in the other way. Seven. Fingers in, thumb in, loop round. Eight. Fingers in, thumb in, loop round. Nine. Get an arm triangle. <laughs> <laughs> Ten. I run out of ideas, arm triangle. Guillotine. Guillotine. Eleven. <laughs> Good. Look, choke. 12. Look, choke the other side. 13. Oh, I'll definitely run out of ideas. Standard choke. <laughs> oh, lame. 15. Good. 16. Good. 17. Good. Stop shoving the mat. 18. <laughs> 19. <laughs> Stop shoving the mat. 20. Very good. Stop moving so, my mat. I'm very good to myself. Very good people at home following along. Um, move the mat slightly that way. Hmm? You move the mat. Big I'm the shot. Yeah, there you go. Good, so, we're going to do the next one. It's actually Julia's idea. It's actually a very smart idea. Ooh. So, like we did, we did a rear naked choke in our last video, and my knee represented the person's neck. So what I'm going to do is put a belt around my knee, and this is going to represent their lapel, right? This bit on the key. So, I'm going to be here. I'm going to, I'm going to keep that, right? I'm going to sit all the way up, right? and then I'm going to do my grips, choke, choke, squeeze, and then... Choke at your knee to your ear if you can. Yeah, sit up, choke, choke, squeeze, I'm going under my leg, dude, I've got an alternate group to you. What? Choke. Why are you going under your leg? Choke, squeeze. That feels wrong. Feels like a better grip. And Not I'm for back. your knee, if you're tapping out your knee, you're good job. Good job. That's like going under someone's neck, stupid. So this is... Their neck, their lapel. Ooh, like that. Here. Yeah. We're coming up. 
Good. One grip. Two grip. Squeeze the choke. Come back. Let's do ten more. Come up. One grip. Two. Two grip. Squeeze. That's two. Come up. One grip. Two grip. Squeeze. That's three. Come up. One grip. Two grip. Squeeze. That's four. You can come along at home. One. Two. Squeeze. Five. Two. Up. One. Two. Squeeze. Six. Going up. One. Two. Squeeze. Seven. Going up. One. Two. Squeeze. Eight. Going up. One. Two. Squeeze. Nine. It's like on somebody's got one. A reasonable hit. Very good. So. Adrian. Third. We're now going to look at a drill to get good at arm bars from Matt. So there's lots of different ways of doing arm bars from Matt. You've probably been shown uh, the most people know the S mount way, the kind of slow inch by inch. There's also a faster way where you just put your hands like this on the chest and throw your leg over, right? So Julia's going to demonstrate because if I do it to her, she's going to get squished and get angry. So, <laughs> so this is going to be how you should mostly, roughly, in a general idea, do it. <laughs> <laughs> So we're here, and Julie does this shape with her hands. Good. And then lifts herself up. And then my right leg's coming over on the top of your head. Yep. Oh! And it's a super fast, very aggressive way of doing CPR or an armbar. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to do a solo drill version of this. So I'm going to go like this with my hands, this shape. I'm going to lift myself okay. up. And then I'm going to throw my leg over the top, and I would be ready for my arm bar here. Yeah. So you're going to do it with me. I'm just going to do 10 again. So here, here, and then push. One, good. And back. Now I'm going to do the other way. One, here. Two, good. And back. One, two, up. Three, and back. Good. And here. One, ball, hook. Four. And back, good. Here, one, two, five, good. And back. Four, here, try and do one slow. Yeah, let's go, muscle. Oh, I don't have it. <laughs> so, that was terrible. I'm right, oh, too heavy. <laughs> here, eight, good. You're not just. Oh, that was a got a bit more height by being on my fingers. Let's try that again. That wasn't good. Oh, oh ten, I broke the mat. So, <laughs> hopefully you guys can do that better, better than me. But yeah, that's a really effective way of doing an armbar from mount. And doing it that way <laughs> can mean you get speed, but it's just not as tight as doing it the conventional like S-mount way. So our next drill, we're going to look at spider guard to a triangle choke. So, um, quite a usual submission, but it's, uh, I was trying to think of things we can drill with just the key jack at home and no partner. So, usually spider guard, like we did in the last video, is like a leg lasso position. But what you can do, just from here, often, I don't know what this is called, I call it the puppet position. Right? I go one foot up, and one foot down. And they're naturally going to fall forwards because I was putting them in their hands, and then I'm into my triangle choke here. So I'm here, into my triangle there. So what you're going to do, do is you take your jacket off. Maybe you can face the camera a bit away. So without a person, I'm going to, my jacket. I'm going to make my puppet. It's like fighting a ghost. Whoa. He's passing. He's passing. I'm going to go up and down and get my triangle choke. Or, oh, thread back. Wait, wait. Uh, my head is okay. You could just use your belt. <laughs> you could just use your belt, Kim. But this is like being attacked by a ghost. So <laughs> it's more one foot's going to go up, the other one's going to go down. Bom, so you end up with the key between your legs, and you're going to triangle. And then the challenge is use your feet to put the key back, not your hands. Okay. So it's a bit of dexterity. Okay. We're going to go to the other side. One, good, and back. Two. I'm just going to do ten. <laughs> Three. 
You like flying ghosts. What? You like flying ghosts? It's funny. Are you ready? Go on. Woo -hoo. Oh. You're an idiot. Wait, next just to get the key back up. Five. Two. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Six. And if the ghost starts trying to pass, you have to do Whoa, the first one. No, 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 no. Oh, knee check. No. Seven. Oh, I got it. Oh, you oh, can't. Oh, it's top pressure. Ah, oh, it's daggy. Ah, oh, it's daggy. I can't kill. Three more. <laughs> Eight. I mean, I'm totally taking, taking this really seriously. All right. And tap. But then the next time, Polka guys come to the house, you're going to mess them up. Look at that. Look at that. Bicep crush. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and very good. So we're going to look at, we've got two more drills to go. So. Are you in my one? Yes. So this is one of my favorite things to teach beginners, right? Because a lot of people, when you start to do this, you start in the. And you say, ah, so you bump this, and you right? It's always better to start stood up, but not every gym can do it, you don't have enough space. Music. So, generally, you don't want to do this. There's no translation, there's no competition, well, almost no competitions where you start on your knees, there's no MMA fights where you start on your knees, there's no, there's no reason to fight on your knees, right? That's almost no, right? So, if I'm here and the person stays on their knees, I'll always sit down and play guard, right? Even, even if you're not a guard player, because then you're not wasting your time fighting on your knees. But what happens is, I sit down to play guard, and they will often put one leg up or stand up, like this, right? Stand all the way up. So what I want to do is be able to come up and then start <laughs> grabbing their leg, right? So if you go on one leg, so I can be here, and look, I've got guard, I pull my foot in, and then I would push them, if I've got a lapel, or I can go hip and ankle, and then trip them down, and now I can pass. Right? So, you need to be able to do this movement where you tuck your foot in and you come over the top of it here. Right? Like that. So I tuck my foot in and I come over the top of it. Yeah. Now I'm going to do 20 times. With no here. hands? No hands. Hands is cheating. Because I've got to be holding them. Okay. So, ready? One. And back. Two. Three. If you're good at this, it'll be very, it will really help with your rolling. Five, six. Please do if you don't have your foot all the way up. And drive a hip, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, oh, thirteen, fourteen. You don't have some hands. 15 with the ankle pit. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Ah, my knees. Boom. Next one's worth. So, <laughs> we've done nearly all our drills. We've got one more drill to go. And this is, this doesn't necessarily have a translation to a specific Jiu Jitsu move like everything else we've done, but it's good. It kind of helps a little bit with that, and it's good like movement practice, as it were, right? One of those buzzwords that means nothing. So what I'm going to do, we're going to sit with our legs crossed. Now, no hands, people at home. Hands is cheating. I'm going to stand all the way up, spin, all the way down. Ooh, no. I can't do that. Oh, everyone at home wants to see you try. <laughs> now, if you're struggling, Use your hands a little bit, right? Give yourself a bit of hand, and then rock back and rock up, and it'll help you be able to stand up, spin, and then sit down, and end up swapping legs. And down. Good. Ah, so smooth like that. I'm just going to do five. <laughs> We're going to do it together. You ready? One. Oh, I've got bad knees. Wait, this is the other leg. Oh, it's wrong. That would be another one. Two. I beat you. Three. I'm just literally just walking around now in a second. Try and get something out of your um, isolation. <laughs>
So, the, uh, I read a little bit of philosophy here and there. <sighs> all these cheesy self-help books, Jews and Diver. So, one of the reasons that people get depressed or unhappy, especially retired people, because they feel like they're not contributing anymore, or not achieving anything. Um, and it like makes you nervous, because when we used to live in small groups of hunter-gatherers, if you didn't contribute anything, they'd find a way to lose your body on the head or something. So, if you want to stay happy, you want to try and achieve a little something every day. And it could be doing one of these workouts. It could be playing with the children. Shh. Um, it could be every day I'm trying to do like an hour of studying a foreign language. Um, both feet out. Reach your toes. You want to come stretch? She needs a pee. <laughs> Um, just a little bit of something every day. Go for your one, one allowed Boris run. Try and do a little bit of something every day and you'll feel much better. And then with Jiu-Jitsu, even if you can't train, just watching videos of even top competitive competing and seeing what they do, it can really, it can help train your like, mental process. I've seen it when I've taught students. Some of these guys that play like the Xbox game, they come in and they're actually, they know a little bit because they know what comes after every move, they know some of the transitions. I'm not saying play Xbox all the time when you're off, but watch some MMA and Jiu Jitsu matches and it'll help you learn a little bit more. So just stretch your legs. Good. And then come onto your front, drop your hips down. Stretch back. Sit on your knees, head to one side, and the other, head backwards, forwards, give it a little shake. Thank you everyone for watching, click that subscribe button, and there'll be some more videos coming out next week, I'm going to keep you Saying during this time of no jiu-jitsu. Right.